Good morning and welcome to the Angry Astronaut. So got a quick bulletin for you today and it may come as a shock to a lot of you to have noticed the title of this video and the fact that I'm actually going to speak in a positive way about Blue Origin. But just to refresh you as to why I feel the way I do about Blue Origin, I've always felt that Jeff Bezos' idea of exporting heavy industry, exporting all the damaging stuff on our planet out into space and creating a thriving space industry, space infrastructure, etc. That whole dream of his, I've always felt, was a good one. The problem is he hadn't really ever made any tangible progress on it. Of course, never making it to orbit. Of course, not having a rocket, at least anything that we can see that's going to be operational in the near future, maybe next year, but probably not. Nothing that's going to be able to accomplish what he's setting out to do, even after being in the business for 20 years. And then, of course, all of the litigious things that this company does and the fact that they keep getting awarded contracts, even though they really haven't done a great deal to prove themselves. So why am I suddenly excited about Blue Origin? Well, because they finally started to make tangible progress on what they're setting out to do. That is to say, establish an infrastructure and an industry in space. Now, a lot of you have probably heard about it and it may seem to just be kind of a small scale innovation that they've come out with. The ability to manufacture solar panels on the moon, perhaps to provide energy on the moon for a future moon base, that sort of thing. But it's actually much, much bigger than that. And if this new innovation called Blue Alchemist actually gets utilized to its full potential, it could change the future not only of spaceflight, but the future of our entire civilization. So what is Blue Alchemist exactly? Well, Blue Origin has been working on this concept for the last couple of years without really announcing it. Indeed, even the rollout of this particular innovation was done without a great deal of fanfare, which I find to be very strange given how important it is. So why is it so damn important? Well, first of all, we recognized a very long time ago that all of the components that are required in order order to manufacture solar panels are in the lunar regolith. This includes silicon, iron, magnesium, aluminum, nickel, and other elements that are absolutely vital to the manufacture of solar panels no matter where you might be. And if you can manufacture those solar panels on the moon instead of having to lug them around with you, well, it makes building a lunar power grid a whole lot easier and also removes the necessity of huge amounts of payload going to the moon if a lot of what you need can be manufactured on the moon. And this, of course, includes habitats as well as power because all of those can be constructed out of in-situ resource utilization as well. And, of course, if we can do this, it's going to make building a lunar base or lunar cities a lot more feasible. So how is Blue Origin actually accomplishing this? What is Blue Origin? alchemist? Well, it utilizes a process called molten regolith electrolysis. And in this process, Blue Origin has been subjecting a simulated lunar regolith to a direct electric current, heating the regolith to 1600 degrees Celsius or even higher. And through this process, iron, silicon, and aluminum can be extracted directly from the regolith. Now, according to Blue Origin, they've managed to produce silicon to more than 99.999% purity through this process. And if this is indeed the case, and if their simulated lunar regolith is accurate, and given the fact that Blue Origin has direct access to the samples that NASA has that were brought back from the Apollo missions, we have a pretty good indication that they've gotten quite good at this. Now, of course, heating something to 1600 degrees Celsius is going to require a great deal of power, but 
but the more you use it and the more solar cells you create, the more power you're going to have at your disposal. Now, I'm sure at least some of you are thinking right now, wait a minute, wait a minute, this isn't so pie in the sky as you're thinking, angry astronaut, because the moon is tidally locked. 14 days out of 28, which means you're not going to get any solar power whatsoever two weeks out of every four. So how is that ever going to create reliable solar power? Well, the moon may be tidally locked, but that actually makes the lunar poles a very advantageous place to gather solar energy because the moon is, does not have an axial tilt the way the Earth does, which means there are areas of both poles that are subjected to near constant sunlight, especially at Shackleton Crater, where we are planning to build our first lunar base. So you can get almost non-stop solar energy at this location, which is the ideal spot for us to build a base anyway, because that's where all the lunar ice is. And not only can this process be used to produce solar panels, it can also manufacture a variety of different types of metals to be used to construct habitats and other structures on the surface of the moon. On top of that, you can also manufacture glass coverings for your solar panels, which are necessary in order to be able to survive the harsh lunar environment. And on top of that, you can also produce oxygen as a byproduct of this process. Process. Nearly 50% of the lunar regolith has oxygen trapped inside it, which means this entire process can produce the materials for habitats to build your lunar base, the solar panels necessary to power your lunar base, and the oxygen necessary for astronauts to breathe on your lunar base. It's really astonishing. And if it can be carried out on a very large scale, we could have cities on the moon a lot more quickly than we ever thought possible in the past. But it gets even better than that. We have to keep in mind that manufacturing solar cells here on Earth, something that we regard to be the cleanest kind of energy, requires an enormous amount of damage to the environment. The process of creating silicon here on this planet and also purifying it can be very damaging to the environment and creates a great number of toxins. Also, my Mining the other materials required for solar power, especially nickel, is very damaging to the environment. The mining that's carried out in Africa necessary to produce most of China's solar cells is absolutely cataclysmic to the environment in the Congo and other countries and also requires the use of child labor, or at least that's the way the Chinese are carrying out a lot of their mining these days. All of that can be eliminated if you can produce your solar panels on the moon. But of course, manufacturing solar panels on the moon and then shipping them to Earth? How could that be done efficiently? Well, here's the deal. You don't have to bring them back to Earth. Instead, you can build enormous solar power stations either on the moon or preferably in low Earth orbit. And as I've mentioned many times before, transmit your energy down to Earth utilizing microwaves, a process that's being worked on very aggressively by the European Space Agency and the UK Space Agency called Project Cassiopeia. Each one of these orbital power stations is capable of generating a gigawatt worth of energy and transmitting it down to Earth, but it's very expensive to deploy simply because of the tyranny of gravity. It would require many, many starship flights in order to build something this big, especially considering that you have to build it in geosynchronous orbit in order to get constant exposure to sunlight and also to be able to transmit the energy continuously down to the Earth's surface. Oh, you're not familiar with this project? Well, shame on you. I got a great interview with a young lady who's heading up this project in the United Kingdom, a brilliant engineer, and you can check out my interview with her at the end of this video. Don't miss it. And yes, I did say low Earth orbit earlier. I meant geosynchronous orbit. That's where these power stations need to be in order to transmit their energy continuously to the same spot on the planet. And it is far 
far easier to deploy lots of mass to geosynchronous orbit from the moon than it is from Earth. And the reason for that is delta V. It requires one sixth the delta V to get from the moon to geosynchronous orbit than it requires to do the same thing from Earth to geosynchronous orbit. And if you can have six times as much material being delivered to geosynchronous orbit with every rocket launch, you can build these structures for one sixth the price. Plus, you can also produce the solar panels without any damage to the environment whatsoever, which means it will allow us to build this massive infrastructure of solar energy in Earth orbit in a far shorter span of time and for a lot less money that it will take it to do it the other way around. You just need to build the necessary manufacturing infrastructure on the moon and Blue Origin just took the first massive step forward in the process of creating that infrastructure. And given the enormous amount of money that Jeff Bezos has at his disposal, and also given the fact that he has recently devoted one of the two major departments at his company to a lunar economy, that suggests to me that Jeff has the capability and the finances to build this infrastructure on the moon in a short short span of time if he really wants to. Let's hope that he actually does, because a massive step forward, at least technologically, has just been taken by Blue Origin. Last year, the whole notion of creating solar panels or any other sort of in-situ resource utilization on the moon was purely theoretical. Nobody had really built anything tangible to demonstrate that it could be done, but little did we know that Blue Origin had been working on this project for the last two years and just hadn't been telling us about it. Who knows what else they may be working on behind the scenes. Yes, it gets very frustrating reporting on this company. It also is a very difficult company to root for. Given all the delays with New Glenn, given all the delays with the BE-4 and the negative impact that's had on Vulcan Centaur and the entire defense industry associated with it, there are so many things that piss me off about Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin. But if this one announcement turns out to bear fruit in the future, the kind of fruit I think it's capable of bearing, well, Blue Origin could suddenly become one of the most important private space companies on the planet. We are clawing ever closer to 100,000 subscribers, guys. We added 350 new subscribers in the last 48 hours. Welcome to all of my new viewers, and please subscribe if you haven't done so. We are getting so, so very close. And until Blue Origin does actually do something that has a visible and tangible impact on the future of human spaceflight, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.